In this tutorial, we are going to take this photo and we are going to turn it into this photo using Lightroom Classic, or uh, if you're just using Photoshop, you can use Photoshop's Camera Raw. It's got the same exact features. Everything I do here will work the same exact way inside of there. Folks, my name is Mac Laskowski. Welcome back to the latest tutorial. Uh, the photo that we're going to work with here was taken on the southern coast in California, and um, it was, I believe, my Sony A7R3 F16 ISO 100, one quarter of a second shutter speed to get a little bit of motion in that water. And uh, we're simply just going to do a start to finish edit of this photo right here. So let's go ahead and dive in. As I mentioned, I am inside of Lightroom Classic. Uh, this will work exactly the same if you were using Photoshop's Camera Raw and opened up a raw photo or even uh, mostly the cloud version of Lightroom as well. Uh, first things first, sometimes I crop early, sometimes I crop late. Uh, in this case, the crooked horizon line is really bugging me. So I'm going to go to my crop tool, grab the straighten angle object from it and just drag along this horizon line to get that straight. So uh, again, that one was bugging me. So uh, it's it's something I would get out of the way pretty quickly. Um, as far as the rest of the cropping, I actually think the photo looks pretty good. So I wouldn't necessarily worry too much about cropping anything else other than a crop for your specific output size, which only you can determine that because you would know how uh, you're going or what size you would output this to. Uh, from there, so like many landscape photos, uh, I think shadows are, are typically a problem, especially when we're shooting towards sunrise or sunset. So shadows are typically a problem and we usually pull back on the highlights to bring back some more detail in the skies. Um, I'm also going to pull back overall on exposure here. All right. And I'm doing that knowing that I'm still going to do some selective changes. I'm still going to try to tone down the sky and I'm also going to bring up some of the foreground areas. So I'm going to do that a little bit later, but just overall, I think the exposure needed to come down um, so that I can bring those other areas up and have it look good. I'm also going to take a, a pretty good creative uh, liberty on this photo. And if you're not the kind that likes to take creative uh, liberties, I might not be the guy to follow because I like to do it quite a bit. So I'm going to really cheat this toward blue and toward magenta just to give the photo a different feeling, um, almost that twilight type of a feeling. <clears throat> and then from here, I think really the, the main thing to do is is to start with our selective tools because I think that's what actually is going to make the biggest impact on this photo. Um, from global adjustments, there's not too much more we can do, but I wanna bring out the rocks in the foreground. I wanna bring out a little bit more area in the foreground here, and I wanna tone down, especially this top right area of the sky. So let's take care of the sky first. We'll work from the top down, although there is absolutely no rule to this. We'll go over here to the graduated filter and I'm going to bring down my exposure and sometimes the highlights. And, and I'll determine that after I, I drag the filter onto the photo, but this will just give me a little bit of a gauge to, to start working with here. And I'm just going to angle this in. I'm angling it in because I don't, I don't necessarily want the left side of the sky. In fact, what I'd rather do is try to even this sky out. And as you saw from the before image, it's brighter over here because the sun was going down in this direction. But um, although I know the sun was going down in that direction, it, it adds for an awkward type of an, an appearance and, and an offset type of an appearance in the photo, which is why I want to even that out. So that's why I angled that in a little bit. Um, and I think that looks pretty good. Again, you know, we can, it's sometimes it'll be highlights to bring down that sky. Sometimes it might be exposure. So I think exposure would probably get a little heavy handed here where highlights will let me bring down, especially in some of those brighter areas will let me tone that down a little bit better. I also might cheat a little bit more blue into it just by using that temperature slider here. So probably something right about there. All right, next up, I think, I actually think we look pretty good up there in the sky. One of the things I can do is go over here to the bottom of the graduated filter to my range mask, and I can turn this to the luminance option. And what this will let me do is it'll let me hide the, the graduated filter from certain areas of luminance, be it bright or be it dark. 
So in this case, I don't want to darken this, this rock over here anymore. So I can go down and I can grab the edge of my rain slider on the dark side and I can start bringing that in. Okay. It might be hard to see sometimes, especially on a, on a video screen where you're watching this, it might be hard to see what that's doing, but there's a little checkbox right above it and you can turn that on and then it's going to show you in red currently what your filter is adjusting. And then you just grab this slider and you, you start moving it over here. And now I can see that you could see where the red's going away. That means it's erasing that area from that filter. Okay. Wouldn't want to go too far because I'll start, I'll start pulling it away from the sky, but you can see, we can pull back a lot of that darkness and depending on how you know bad the transition gets, you can adjust your smoothness setting down there as well. Okay. So I think that is looking pretty good. I might, I might go back just a hair. You also have to watch out for halos around those areas. So just, just be a little bit careful. You can't get too heavy handed with it. Okay. So from here, let's switch gears to the foreground. So I'm going to go grab my brush tool and I'd like to brighten up a couple of these rocks in the foreground, especially this big one on the left-hand side. So we will go over here and let's go move our exposure slider to the right a little bit. Hit the left bracket key on my brush tool and I'll just start painting in some exposure. Now you're going to notice I'm not going to worry about the edges here and that's deliberate. So I'm, I'm just painting that whole rock. A lot of times when I do something like this, although there is an auto mask setting and I could have it be exact if I want, I generally don't want it to because light doesn't behave that way. All right. Light doesn't cut out a perfect edge. So what I do is I overpaint a lot of times and you can see if I hover over the little pin, you can see that it's, it's that, that red glow, that overlay goes outside beyond the boundaries. I do that to then go grab the erase option for the brush tool and I make the brush a little bit bigger. And then what I do is I erase and I, you'll notice my brush is barely crossing on the inside of the rock. I'm erasing and I'm letting it feather and just chip away at my brightness. And that gives me for, for, for my tastes, that gives me a more real realistic way to brighten things. Okay. So if I want to brighten things, it just feathers the light a little bit more. It acts a little bit more like light would work. And it just gives me more realism in that adjustment. So that's before that's after, and then I can go in here and adjust it. Sometimes exposure, if it's, it's dark and in the shadows, sometimes clarity does the job of, of bringing a little bit more contrast and um, a little bit more attention to those areas. And I might even cheat it with a little bit of warmth too. Not much. I don't want it to be orange, but just a little bit more warmth in there. Okay. Um, I could do the next thing. I'm going to go grab my brush tool here. I could do the next part. I, I want to, I want to brush a little bit more into the foreground here and even onto the waves and, and whatnot, but I'm actually not going to do the brush because I think I can get better results if I go to the graduated filter and then just drag it from the bottom up like so. Now that's given me a nice feathered way, feathered way to adjust uh, this foreground here. And then what's nice about this is I can go in and I can use my brush to eliminate certain areas from it. Now, on the topic of brushes, how about a quick word from our sponsor? You got to love those segues. <laughs> if, uh, if you are interested and you like what you see here, I hope you'll swing by my website. I actually have a course called The Art of Landscape Editing. Um, and this is, this is really like my capstone landscape editing course. And it goes beyond the basics of just how to use Lightroom and Photoshop. And it really starts diving into a vision based way of editing, you know, how to look at your photos and determine what those photos can be, what areas of those photos you can start to adjust. And it really concentrates a lot on the whole vision part of it, not necessarily the what of the tools and, and you know, what each tool is going to do, but more why, you know, why are you going to use each tool? You can see a full outline on there. There's a lot of stuff in this course about skies, about blending, about blending really, really difficult blends with bright and dark areas in skies, a little bit of luminosity masking, light, atmosphere, glow, lots of fun stuff. So I hope you'll swing by and check that out. Back to our story. So we left with that. I, I'd made this big adjustment to the, uh, to the photo at the bottom here. And then what I'd want to do is go grab the brush option to this. 
and now I can erase or add to it. So in this case, I want to erase because if I, again, if I, you can see the overlay, if I press O for overlay, you can see where this is adjusting. And so what I want to do is take a little bit away from that. So I'm going to take my brush into erase mode. Notice I clicked on the brush option, not the actual brush tool. So when I erase from here, I'm actually erasing from that graduated filter that we added to the image, not from not actually using the brush tool, just using the brush tool to manipulate the graduated filter. So it works out really, really well. So I'm just going to erase it from the rock, maybe a couple other areas around here and yeah, not too much down there, uh, and down there at the bottom there. So that way I can, I can, to me, in a more even way, adjust my foreground. And I might go in here and add a little bit more warmth like I did on that rock and maybe a little bit of texture to give it, uh, it gives it a little bit of contrast and texture. Texture is a great word for the slider because it gives you texture and maybe even some clarity and a little bit of shadows, but not too much, somewhere around there. Uh, one last thing is I will go to my brush tool. One thing I didn't do from earlier is... I wanted to bring in a little bit more exposure over here on this rock. So I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll go in here and I'll paint it. All right. And I'm over painting it. So it's probably going to have a little bit of a glow around it. If you were to see the overlay that, that encompassed that rock, but then I would go down to the erase option for it and just erase away the edges. So we don't have that glow and it just feathers the adjustment a little bit more. If it starts to look a little too milky, you can give it a little bit of uh, temperature, warm it up, and you can give it a little bit of texture or clarity in there, and that'll help it from looking too fake like it was artificially uh, brightened inside of Photoshop. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think the last thing I would do here, a couple of uh, a couple of exposure edits, mostly on whites or blacks. I sometimes do this in the beginning, but on a photo like this where I did a lot of exposure edits, sometimes I'll do it at the end, which is hold down the Option or Alt key, go to my whites slider, press down Option Alt as I move the white slider to the right, you can start to see some whites appear. So I don't want to go that far, and I know I don't want to go that far, so I'm going to back it off until I don't see anything and maybe even back it off a little bit more because there really should be no white point here. And then I would do the same thing on blacks. We already have a little bit of a black point, but that'll give us a nice amount of contrast for the photo. I would head down here to effects and maybe throw a little bit of an edge vignette just to focus your attention in away from the edges toward what I consider the magic of the photo is this middle front area here. And then the last thing I would do is press Command or Control E to jump this over into Photoshop for one tiny little, one tiny little thing that I really couldn't do inside of Lightroom. And that is to, to take care of that little wave down there is just bugging me. Um, it's, it's interrupting what I consider a nice area uh, that has some, has some nice little streaks in the water down there. So uh, I would, I'm just going to jump in here and see if I can get rid of that. And in Photoshop, what I would do is just grab the, uh, grab the lasso tool from the toolbox and just lasso around that area and then head up here to edit, go down to content aware fill, which you're probably only going to see in the later subscription versions of Photoshop. So make sure you're using that. And then I can go in here and I can, I can just tell, I can tell it what I want it to use. So whatever is in green is what it's going to consider. Um, as my adjustment, so I can force it, in this case, to use some of those areas. I actually think that's going to look pretty good. Like so. All right. And when we're done, we just click OK. Uh, a couple other areas inside of here, you know, there's a couple little rocks and pebbles, but honestly, I'm, I'm mostly OK with them. I think, I think that just did a nice job of just evening out that area. Um, if, if it does bug you and if you're printing this big, a lot of times I'll go to the spot healing brush and I'll get rid of some tiny little rocks in the background there. Cause what's going to happen is they're not going to appear as rocks. They're going to appear as specks and spots in the photo. And it's just going to have somebody walking up and scratching at the frame, scratching at the print saying, Hey, you know, is that a spot or a speck or was that meant to be there? So a lot of times it just depends on, on what you're doing with the photo. But if you were going to print it big, 
any little specks or spots that you see out in the water there. Um, take the time to get rid of them because it'll just, it'll make that printed version much better. And from here, all I would do is hit file, save, and I can close the photo and that would return me right back over into Lightroom with a copy of it. So here's what we'll do. Let's go to our original photo. I'm gonna hit the reset button and we can take a look. So there is our before photo and there is our after. So once again, before and after.